Hello there, welcome back to the Aztecs. Last time, well, we uh, took over one England, which currently isn't going that well. We uh, did get wiped out in England itself, but we currently have 15,000 men on standing here, so we can't actually try and land any more troops either, because while well, Scotland gave them military access, and that kind of, uh, kind of screwed me over. But, in, uh, on the positive side of things, the Austrians is screwing over Europe, so that's not really an uh, issue here. They will most likely be able to, um, to cause them to the repair damage to Bavaria. And as such, what I'm really actually trying to or more or less attempt to do here is um, more or less trying to sneak an army over to a for the pure purpose of taking. Uh, taking Rome here, but once again, it's, I'll probably have to take both of these in Kona and Roma, and then only Sivir Vino as a vassal if I were to do that. But once again, I would very much uh, prefer to already be in, uh, in a war where I have Austria as an ally if I were to try and pull that out. And of course, I would also be very much uh, very much happy if I could get the uh, the French here as a as an ally again, so we'll have to see how that works out. But for now, we'll just focus on getting. Uh, Sieging some of the English provinces. We'll probably try and take a couple of them, but not much, and we'll see how how this all actually ends up. But we really need to start fighting Europe or get ourselves up on the same level. We do have forces that can fight, but we still need to have a superior have superior numbers if we are to actually win uh, with battles and such. So I might really start uh, utilizing a lot of uh, a lot of mercenaries um, right now. We could of course take the Bavarian money, but we kind of needed to actually uh, keep all score up, I think. Uh, let's see here. Pied over fast. Yeah, we need it. We simply need the occupation to actually keep the war score. So we'll decline that one. But as I said, we'll try and we'll try and do a little bit of siege and see if we can get something out of the English here. Uh, they're still rather stubborn, the length of the uh, military strength and so forth. So we'll just keep on going and causing trouble, and then. We'll then we'll actually get this inside this down line. We should be able to uh, potentially get something out of this, but we'll simply have to wait and see. We'll see how it goes. I guess we'll do it simple and just go for those pieces. We do have 33% war score, uh, mostly through simply sieging. But I guess we should be uh, we should be fine by just taking these four. It'll actually give me 50% overextension. This is ridiculous. The fact that this Aztec Empire. Yeah, it's 50% overextension from taking four provinces in England. Um, to be honest, overextension is a bad mechanic as far as I'm concerned. It really doesn't make any sense because, well, you can drag it how far you want to, but it honestly isn't a, uh, a very good mechanic no matter how you actually look at it. It definitely has its flaws, but once it's actually a little bit, uh, a little bit, well, I should say, fleshed out, worked on, it could become a very good one. But for now, it doesn't really make any sense because it's basically just on base tax. It's not really, uh, it's not really making sense in terms of how hard it would actually be to take just four colonies here. I could potentially um, even send all of the Englishmen home if I really want to. Of course, with severe, uh, with severe uh, damage to the provinces themselves. But as things are standing now, it, it really does make much more sense to me. Sorry, my really good home. So, uh, where was I? Yeah, we do have the overextension issue, and still could use some some refinement, in my opinion. And one way to fix this, I would basically say, is that you could, for example, take a standing army of, let's say, 20,000 men or so, and basically put them to uh, on the task of. I guess you could just basically do this, uh, have a reduce overextension button. Basically, what they'll be doing is. Uh, Controlling the area, making sure that the well, integration goes as planned or something like that. It could of course be a little bit too aggressive, but still, I definitely like to get such a feature because that would basically mean that you could make it a little bit more, how should I put this, uh, extreme important. Even so, it made sense that the extension would actually cost that much if you well, you kept the area controlled military wise, but potentially you should actually gain all the extension pack as you know. So, my idea might not actually be that good, but once again, the overextension mechanics here 50% for all provinces is still, 
it's still too much in my suggestion, or in my opinion. But still, we'll go for we'll go for this now. We'll take these four provinces, and with that, we now have a few problem. We need to uh, keep these this area in check. We also need to start the boring procedure. As you can see, it will take almost uh, almost ten years, just one month of waiting in, in most cases. So. That's once again a ridiculous fact that it takes forever to actually just go ahead and uh, and call something. Kind of hilarious news here, we do have now the alliance that I wanted to get for the longest of time now with France again. As you see, France accepted off into a military yeah, alliance here, yeah, allied now with both the Trinidad and Empire and also France with Scotland. That means that I'm basically now allied with most of Central Europe uh, through well, Austria. Well, pretty, pretty likely actually form the Roman Empire, so that gives me to some extent an advantage. I will, of course, have to fight both of these allies, and I might not be seeing them. It's actually not them. So it's not really that much of a problem. It's it just needs to be one of these two. Although I'm not really sure it's in this area, that's all I know. But even so, it's not really a problem. There are three capitals that will be kind of in the crap. That is Madrid. Paris and London, but Rome, I can take a more war, it's more like I can take a more war. Um, here I can take a more war, it's definitely going to be these things that will be annoying that you might not want to do any wars and as such, I might actually have to start focusing on eating up Spain pretty soon. I'll probably take one yeah, of these four of these, uh, I if I can, I should make it proper here also, it's that this course. This one here. I can, of course, take this one and simply use it as a feeding ground to feed the provinces. I'll probably do Portugal and Aragon. I'll probably also feed Aragon uh, if I do. It actually exists here. Well, I should actually know that, but even so, this means that I do now actually have the grounds to go ahead and vassalize them in more war for the war that I started against Spain, because as far as I can see here, they are just allies. And that's great, I'm pretty sure I can actually then go ahead and vassalize them. The problem will be that I need to have troops in the area so that the French doesn't actually siege them. But things are looking up a little bit better. Uh, these rebels actually came from these provinces here. Fortunately, I did not actually have the... Uh, I guess I should say capabilities to actually fight them, but uh, we do it. Well, I guess I will be using mercenaries to fight them for the sole purpose of allowing them to have much more. I have started to build Heretics. Also, they rose up in a province where I'm actually trading hilarious. So, I lost one of the units that I trained to be purely because the notion that trouble actually rose up, and apparently now they will rise up quite often. Let's see, it was possible. Patriot, religious, heretic. So, yeah, I got 50% overextended in the east. It's four provinces that doesn't actually, yeah. They don't actually matter at all in any in any way of I already had two re <laughs> uh, rebel risings as a pure uh of this a pure uh, well reward from that I guess you call it. They they just worked up some really sort of just for the fact that I had uh, that I had well of course some issues. But nothing we can do with that for now, we'll simply have to uh, continue fighting and we'll try to get our troops ready and I'll probably go around and aim at securing the road uh, rather soon. So for the time being we'll just uh, get, our, get our army set up and then we might actually uh, end up we'll see how it goes. Of course now we did get a stability drop due to the fact that we have a registered council from the up nobility who is ruling our nation. So I believe that guy was went all the other king, he was 24, 25, 26, and of course he died then pretty, yeah. Uh, it timed it pretty bad, but we do have a pretty good reach to council here in 513, and also the air is fairly good as well. So the only thing now is, uh, we will be most likely into positive prestige by the time the reach the council is We'll also have serial legitimacy, so that will definitely, yeah, that will definitely be a bit difficult. We say one of us want to try and get the natural removal risk a little bit down. Hopefully that will be enough to actually, uh, actually keep it down and that search. 
allow us to find Rebel and so basically everyone is being a bit annoying. Of course, one of the reasons why, one of the reasons that I actually thought about the Rebel didn't really do much longer ago. One of the reasons why I'm having morale issues is because of my own prestige with fighting my enemies. So that is something that I do. I might actually just put on some of the kind of goes in the but at least save the points where it goes to the country and push it down to some point and release it on the So I guess we'll go ahead and we'll have to see if we can of course run the economy for a while longer like this and kind of just go ahead and maintenance by a little bit, that should also be fine. As long as we're making just a little bit of a uh, game game should be fine, as we might imagine. English Patriots, folks. Uh, and of course, my guys are actually losing here, even though they had defensive ground, they had uh, bigger numbers, they actually had cannons as well, but even so they did lose. But this is a mercenary army, so it does really matter, it will replenish itself and then we'll uh, We'll be happy, but as you can see, it is taking four provinces and 50% of the sanction. That's severely in the right now, so we're going to screw my nation over. So, it's not that same level we were to before, but for now, we'll not have too many other choices than to just uh, try and keep, I guess I should say, relations high with, uh, with our allies, and also try then and uh, uh, and to some extent get ourselves in the position where we can actually start fighting, yeah, fighting, political fighting Spain. I do have, as I said, alliances now with both France and Austria, and as such I believe they will automatically get a, yeah, uh, basically France is important in this aspect because they hate Austria's guts. That is the fact here, and Austria hates France, so they would never actually give military access to each other, but I believe they automatically yeah, get it through a war. And that, of course, is a very uh, important thing to take into consideration here because that means that I can actually overwhelm Spain. The main issue will, of course, be the fact that the Spaniards do have a lot of troops in, uh, well, down here. And as such, I need to place in the most mountain, probably Shortiga here. I believe that's the most mountainous region, Hells, Plains, Mountains, 20%. Uh, yeah, we'll probably take Shortiga and use that as. Uh, as the line of defense, we'll basically place troops there to block off the Spaniards that will be, uh, will be attacking. It might be a decade simply to allow these calls to be done, but uh, by that time we should have fought enough uh, enough upper military and not one attack. So, in fact, uh, As you can see right now, the uh, rebels that are rising up aren't actually uh, much of a challenge. We can deal with them. And with that, we should be uh, we should be just fine, really. I need to recall someone. I'll call you. We'll send you to switch or flip that colony. That is also something that was kind of really good. didn't actually set up any. How good are you? Yeah. We want to allow another pretender to take the throne. That is the biggest uh, question here. So let's see, handle them. 553. I kind of do, really. We do, as I said, have this buddy monarchy. The only problem here would be the increased serfdom, morale of armies. We already have a proper morale of armies. And we also have the uh, issue with the, uh, with the prestige. So I guess we'll, we'll just kill him off. Uh, we'll scan for the various increases. Why? Kill him off. The easiest way to explain that is simply that if we were to allow him, the prestige would plummet again and we'd be in the same kind of uh, kind of hell, it wouldn't be beneficial to us at all. And apparently, yeah, I need to start with these guys. So, um, as I said, we'll try and get ourselves back into uh, back into Europe. But next time, we'll probably try and be a little bit more subtle about it. Go off most likely Spain here first. Scotland is at as an eye from Raleigh. They was actually with the, with the Russians. Once again, everything was fact here. As you can see, Norway and Scotland are the two main uh, perpetrators of the war here. And try and guess who's actually part of this war. Let's take a quick little look here. Go to, uh, go to the 
rest of Scotland. Let's see, uh, Scotland declared war in Norway to take one little island near Orkney. Russia joined in. Austria joined in. Polotsk joined in. And all of this, even Genoa, all of this doesn't really make sense. Sweden protects uh, Scotland, can to some extent be, uh, be yeah, well understood. Spain, not really making that much sense. If I were to, if I actually get into war with, no, wouldn't actually make too much sense. But if I were to join this war, I could potentially start causing uh, some trouble for the Spaniards. But as you can see, it's just one smaller problem. I'm pretty sure that the Spanish doesn't actually care about who owns Orkney up here. Uh, honestly, I'm a little bit more concerned about what Austria, Denmark, Polotsk, uh, Russia will do in this war. But even so, it's kind of various how things can can just steamroll. Uh, I do have to apologize, I think, because once again, it's been an episode that has been dragged out. I've just been basically chit-chatting about things that doesn't really matter. We have finished our war with England, and once again, you've heard my woes about the overextension and how I see it kind of bugged, kind of not complete. Let's just leave it at that. It's kind of bad, to be honest, but as you might imagine, if I am to fight Spain take this area, it'll, have, it'll actually have to be done through three wars over three decades, simply because I have to call this area myself, but it'll take me forever simply because they are Castilian, and basically I can of course fabricate claims and I'll probably do that, but even so, at this stage it doesn't really matter. I need to uh, I need to really get myself into a position where I can fight the Spaniards pretty soon due to the fact that I have France and Austria right now and I have no idea for how long I will be able to keep a hold on them. I really need them to, uh, to fight this war. I can of course use the Austrian and French uh, Navy once I actually go out to England again. But uh, for now we'll most likely focus on Spain, try and vassalize Aragon quickly in the war, give them back as many provinces as possible. And also most likely go out to Lisbon, Beira, uh, so forth. I'm pretty sure that the Spaniards don't actually have any deals with the English, so yeah, as you can see, they do have deals with Scotland, Alsace, Aragon, Naples, uh, Savoy. So, I'll probably be using the, uh, the French for all their words, but it seems like they don't actually have that many troops at home, so let's take a look at the key before we end this. Main has 192,000 men, they have 120,000 manpower. That. The French do actually have more than 47,000, but they're almost out of map power. I have no idea where those troops actually are, which is kind of uh, kind of bad, but Austrian troops, 128,000, but definitely in Europe, they'll definitely be uh, more than enough to do the job here, should I get more Spain. Once again, I'm a little bit unsure how many troops Spain actually has in this area, but judging by the size of the colonial empire, they are over here, they are even up here, uh, it shouldn't actually be that many. They'll probably have a lot in South America and such. That is why we need to try and get 80,000 at the very least, I think, uh, troops to plan for to Palestine and Chorotega. And that is also kind of the reason why I'm actually tempted to wait until these scores are done, just to get rid of the overextension and, the, and as such, uh, solve some of the issues. But uh, we'll have to consider that next time. Unfortunately, this is uh, the end of this one. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment, praise, criticism, and you feel like, and I'll see you around next time. Bye.